Hi everyone. In this video, we will try to understand uh, the seven principles of software testing. In the last video, we have tried to understand what exactly software testing is and why we need that. This video is just in continuation to that where we will try to understand the main principles of software testing. So in all together, we have seven principles. So if you see here on the screen, this is the first principle we have. Uh, let me just select the pen here. Yeah. Okay. This is the first principle where we say uh, testing shows the presence of defect. Exhaustive testing is not possible. Early testing, defect clustering, pesticide paradox, testing in context dependent and absence of error fallacy. What are these? Okay. So. The very first point we will try to understand here, which, which says testing shows the presence of defect. See, any application you take and it talks about defect. Say, if you go and talk about any application, say, which is going into production after the testing is being done, no one can guarantee, okay, that particular application don't have even a single bug. However, other way around, we say that whatever the requirements were there have been tested. Okay. And it is up and running and working. So we are good to move it to production. Let me give a real time example. Uh, in your uh, day to day life. Okay. You must be using say a tooth toothpaste. Okay. What they generally claims. They you will never see a toothpaste company claiming that let me add the pen here. Uh, you will never see a toothpaste company claiming that 100% germ free. Okay. They will be saying something as 99%, 99.1%. Okay. So that is the whole agenda. Uh, that, that is the whole objective here. We, say, we are saying that. Okay. In this point. Now we will move to the next one. Exhaustive testing is not possible. You are a tester. Okay. You have been given some task to do some testing. Say for an example, you have a name field. Okay. And I'm saying you can add inside this number from one to thousand. Okay. I'll ask you to, or let it be this in place of name. This is as number field. Okay. And I'm asking you to do the testing. This field is been developed where it can accept value from one to thousand. So as a tester, we'll just try to do some random value. We'll, we'll try to put some random values. We'll try to do some boundary value based on these numbers. Okay. But no one will go and add from add number like at times he'll add one, then he'll add two, then he'll add three, four, five. And likewise, he cannot go till thousand. Right. So that's in this uh, second principle, we are trying to understand that exhaustive testing cannot be possible. Each and everything you cannot test every time. Okay. So this is the main objective of point two. Now we'll try to understand the third point, which says about early testing. See, if you software development life cycle, SDLC have certain phases. Okay. And in that, the very early in say requirement gathering phase, if you are finding some issues in the documents in the FSDs you have. Okay. So at that particular time, if you're finding defects early, will be, I mean, the cost of fixing that particular bug will be way easy. Say you have a requirement coming in and in the requirement document itself, you found that issue. So there itself, the issue can be corrected. Now, on the other side, if this, if you're not doing early testing and the thing has been missed now from requirement gathering, it went to development, the development team have put some effort. And now when it is coming to testing and then you are raising that as an issue. So can you see this time lapse? Okay. So 
this can be mitigated so that's the reason th the third principle talks about the early testing it save hell lot of money hell lot of time okay uh, now we will see the next point okay so uh, we are now talking about the fourth point where we say defect clustering uh, let me clean this screen first okay so here uh, defect clustering uh, see if you are testing a particular applications and it have multiple modules let me select the pen here yeah it has multiple modules say module 1 module 2 module 3 module 4 okay and there must be most of the time there must be a pattern that in module 2 you will be always seeing the maximum number of defects okay so i mean this is the way we do just a uh, defect clustering uh, giving more priorities to particular module in order to i mean the tester can put some more effort to particular to this module based on their experience based on their expertise just to make sure they are not missing out any valid defects okay so this was uh, mainly about a high level about the defect uh, module now let me talk about this pesticide paradox okay so testing paradox talks about i mean this is very important uh, principles out of all see if we are executing same set of test cases again and again then there is very less chances for those test cases to find defects now that means even if you are running same set of test cases again and again it requires some maintenance it requires some updation okay it, you can you can i mean some steps need to be rewritten some prerequisite need to be added okay so in that way we can improve our testing so even if we have existing test suit i mean those can be updated in order to make sure that we are finding more number of issues so this is our uh, this uh, pesticides paradox talks about now we'll try to understand uh, the next principle which says testing is context dependent in testing will you'll be encountering different different domain say banking domain you'll have insurance domain you'll have telecom domains and many more and these all domains require their own set of testing okay because uh, let me take an example say if you are working on a banking domain okay it is more risk prone area okay so testing is being performed likewise for an example let me take a real time example say if you are going on any trip okay say if you are going anywhere which have temperature falls between say minus 25 to 15 okay and you are going to a different place where you will have temperature from 35 to say 40 degree celsius i mean from point here to here if you are going and from here to here if you are going in both this way the preparation what you will be making is different okay but still you are doing a travel here but the preparation what you will do is different this is what we are talking here in testing is context dependent yeah uh, now we'll move to uh, the next one now uh, let me add the pen here yeah so the last uh, point uh, which comes under your principles of software testing absence of error fallacy say you have tested one application and you are claiming that it is 99% uh, bug free okay but what if if it is going in production and say your end user wanted some functionality to be implemented in it and it is not working at all right then here we are defeating the purpose objective should not be that application should go bug free it is something say uh, an 
our end user whatever the requirements they have it should be implemented and those functionality should also work fine i mean that should be the key objective of any uh, testing or we are validating any requirement yeah so that is all about uh, the seven principles of software testing i just try try to uh, explain on a high level if you guys have any confusion into it you can uh, post your queries in the, into the comment box yeah i'll surely try to answer that and uh, yeah that's it for this video uh, if you are new to this channel uh, don't forget to subscribe to this channel yeah and also uh, please if you find this useful please share it with your friends also yeah Thank you. Bye and see you in the next video.